Good morning guys and welcome to day two of my Dublin vlogs. We are starting off today at the National Museum of Ireland, the Decorative Arts and History. So there's a few different national museums. This used to be, or well it's still called Collins Barracks, but obviously it used to be functioning barracks. But today it is the museum. So this is the first thing we've done today. It is 11 in the morning. I am not a relaxing person to go on holiday with, I'll be fair, but this morning has just like tried my last hair. Sorry, my camera strap's flying about there. So we caught up, we went down to breakfast at 8 o'clock. Somehow we stayed there for an hour. Then it took us to like 10 to get ready. So it's 11 o'clock and we're only just getting here. So this is the courtyard. But yeah, my plan for today was to be at Chupi at 10 o'clock, not like just getting ready at 10 o'clock. Oh, I've got hair in my face. Yeah, lesson learned for tomorrow. Uh, don't come on holiday with your family, guys. That's all I'm saying. If you want to get stuff done, not if they're like mine anyway. But yeah, hopefully I'll have time to go to Chupi after this. So.
So I'm at the museum and I know this is a ridiculous thing to be showing you and I'm sure any actual Dubliners or Irish people if this is Ireland wide rather than just Dublin will be like I can't believe you're remarking in this but they have got the most pleasing sounds to their crossings right so listen to this so you also don't have to touch it you just do that and it knows that you're waiting right did you hear that isn't that the most pleasing thing ever it's like a bit of Star Wars it's like a bit of Disney in your day for crossing the road well obviously the like half hour I spent curling my hair this morning was a complete waste of time. I brought an umbrella and then I couldn't really use it. It was wet this morning which is not really wet anymore but the wind is pretty bad today. Uh, I went a bit of a wander after the museum which probably should have consulted map a little more because I basically just walked through a residential area um, and like I don't know I'm on my own like do you know what I mean I probably shouldn't be wandering through random residential areas it didn't seem like the, the nicest area either if I'm honest um, but I've actually consulted my map now and I'm heading back down towards Dublin proper taking off my mask so you might be able to hear me better um, the museum was really really good the only thing was some of it was shut it was being worked on and it was super super quiet so there were bits that I was like I can't tell if these are actually shot or if there's just nobody in them because there's not many people here um, it's actually a red weather warning today in other parts of Ireland it's not here um, but I heard on RT this morning that they were advising the schools in Dublin to stay shut, so I'd half thought we might have got to the museum and it might be shut anyway. But it wasn't, we got in. Yeah, museum, very, very good. Like the museum. God, like, can you hear that? That is the wind on that tarp hall and up in that building. Um, so yeah. So now I'm heading into Dublin. I think I might try and go to Dublin Castle. See, I've not got anything booked, but we will see if I can get in. Get me out of the wind for a little while. There's St. Patrick's Cathedral where we're getting back on track. We're nearly back where we're, we're actually meant to be. Look how cute this is, that's like a tractor. So they're kind of setting up for the Christmas at the castle stuff at the moment, so I can't really get like a shot across the courtyard that I'm sure you would recognise. But I am booked to see the treaty at three o'clock, which is now fast because I couldn't for the life of me, I think I came a really stupid way and I couldn't figure out how to get in, try and find where I'm meant to be going before my time slot is up. So the treaty is actually in the coach house, which is way over here. So I walked right by it to go to Dublin Castle in the first place. Never mind. Anyway, I feel like 15 minutes left of my time slot, so let's head in. I feel like there should have been a sign outside this bit. I'll show you when we walk back out.
so I am just out of that exhibition. It's actually dark now. I've been in there for ages. That was so good. Like you just got to see all these like like the real, you know, primary source documents that you usually don't get to see with these things. Um so that was that was really, really exciting um for me. Come out, it's I think about five o'clock now. I think it's literally ooh, it was like uh, so I've come out of the coach house. Yeah, I'll show you what I mean about this daft sign and why I ended up going a really weird way. So there's the entrance to the coach house. Here's the sign outside with absolutely nothing to do with the treaty exhibition. Then you walk down this street. So there's the chapel on your left when you're walking down this bit. So over up up there is where the entrance to that exhibition is. So I'm down in this chapel, and here's this sign. So here's the sign for the exhibition with a big arrow pointing as if it's up in there when it's away over there and up a bit. So that's why I was wandering about in there earlier like an idiot. But anyway, oh look how pretty the trees are. I think that Christmas at the castle is going to be really cute. But I don't think it actually kicks off officially until after we've left. I'm going to head to Powers Court now to go to Chupi. That was an exciting little diversion for me. Don't know how many of you have been that interested, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm at Powers Court. I'm going to Chupi to get my ring. I'm so excited, although I do have to say arriving like a drowned rat was never part of the plan, but hey-ho. Oh, this is beautiful, isn't it? Oh, this is even prettier than when I was in yesterday. Oh, look at how lovely it is. So this is the bank that I was showing you yesterday from across the road and this is one of the Trinity College buildings. Look how cute that is, it's got all the snowflakes printed up on it. I have booked to go see the Trinity College library on Friday and I am super excited about that. That's going to be my sort of last thing before I leave, sadly. I don't want to leave, I'd like to stay. Anyway, yesterday I went and got donuts from the Rolling Donut. They were excellent, it's going to be hard to beat to be honest, but today we are trying offbeat donuts. So we'll see which one I prefer. So um, it rained today and I get a bit wet. <laughs> is what it is. I had such a nice outfit on today as well and I messaged Lauren before I was away and I was like I'm so sad you're not coming because like I know my parents won't get one nice photo of me but even if Lauren had been here with today being what it was I don't think there'd have been a nice photo of me but I'm back in the hotel and this is going to be me in for the night. I have got a Chinese takeaway though. Very excited about this. And I've got a spice bag and it's chicken and chips and I think there might be rice somewhere in there and there's like herbs and spices through it so it's like the unofficial dish of Dublin basically. I got it from this place which I googled online and it came up with very good reviews and it was super super busy whilst I was waiting on mine being ready so I have high hopes but first of all I'm going to put my pyjamas on and get comfy. Okay so I had to charge the camera for a bit there but in case you can't tell from the fact I'm halfway through it this is really good. Maybe I'll shine some light down there. That'll help, won't it? But in that time, I have demolished half of this. There is a lot of eating in this. This was seven euros and it's huge. If you can see there, there's chicken, there's chips, and then I think I said rice. I didn't mean rice, there's vegetables. So there's like um, shredded carrot and onion and things through it. And then it's all in spices. Although it's called, I think it's called a spicy bag some places and a spice bag other places. 
but if you see it called spicy bag it's not actually it's not spicy it's definitely got a bit of a kick to it for me as somebody who would like go to Nando's and order lemon and herb like do you know what I mean I have like no tolerance for spice so it's definitely got a bit of a kick but it's not spicy like I'm, I'm still really enjoying it it's just really full of flavour I can see why this has been adopted as the the national dish the only thing is it is bright orange like I mean, let's just not even question what's in this for being this size of a portion for seven euros. I was eating it in there to try and make less of a mess. But I've taken it out just to show you guys and I've already got... I don't know if you can see because the lighting's not great. But yeah, I've got um, orange spice marks on the bed and I'm like, oh no. Um, so I'm very, very sorry to the hotel staff. But yeah, I'm going to put it back in there and eat it from there again. Um, just to try and make slightly less of a mess, but taste-wise, it is amazing. It is everything they promised and more.